Good evening. Welcome to the Distinguished Alumni Awards presentation. I'm Miguel Zaria, class of 1992 and president of the Southwest University Alumni Association. Annually, through our Alumni Awards program, our community celebrates the Southwestern experience. This year, while we cannot gather in person, we wanted to continue that tradition on the Eva Southwestern's 181st anniversary, our Charter Day. We are fortunate to have an alma mater that is both grounded with a vibrant history and simultaneously eager to experience the transformative nature of learning and discovery. There is much for which we can be proud in our past as an institution of higher learning and for what is yet to come. It is on evenings like this that we take a few moments to remember that Southwestern made an impact on each of us. And now as graduates, we are making an impact in our communities and in the greater society. Southwestern's core purpose remains at the heart of our institution, fostering a liberal arts community whose values and actions encourage contributions towards the well-being of humanity. The Southwestern University Alumni Association believes in honoring members of our community who do this exceptionally well in their personal and professional lives. While most schools recognize their alumni for their achievements, what sets our community apart is that those whom we honor, we also know. From the size of our classes of students to the friendships that we have held close for years, each of us knows a Southwestern pirate who has gone to do admirable work in their community or in their career. This is the Southwestern way. What we learned both in and out of the classroom has stayed with us because we were mentored by remarkable faculty and staff, by our peers, and through the honor code, we held one another accountable. We set a high standard for what it meant to be a Southwestern student, and we all committed ourselves to do it on a daily basis. It is no surprise that this commitment has stayed with us long after graduation. Tonight, eight alumni will be honored with a Distinguished Alumni Award. The work they do and have done makes our community better, stronger. They bring distinction to Southwestern University and to the Southwest University Alumni Association. They are carrying forward that standard of excellence the Southwestern set forth for us. That is what you do, the actions you take, the contributions you make, the effect you have on the world that matters most. So it is in this spirit that I would like to share my heartfelt appreciation and congratulations to each of our honorees. Tonight, we celebrate you and your achievements. Thank you, Miguel. I'm so glad to be here with you this evening and I cannot wait for you to all hear about our wonderful distinguished alumni, all richly deserving of their awards. These are the brightest stars in Southwestern University's constellation. And it was really part of our tradition, I know, for many, many years. And despite the challenges that face us today, I am grateful that we can continue to recognize the wonderful work that our alumni are doing in their home communities and in the wider world. To begin our presentations, I'm delighted to share with you the citation for Dr. Timothy Bolton Boone, class of 1977. He's receiving Southwestern University's Alumni Association's highest award of achievement, the Medal of Honor. Dr. Boone is the chair of the urology department at Houston Methodist Hospital and director of education for the Houston Methodist Institute for Academic Medicine. He's Professor of Urology and Associate Dean for both Weill Cornell Medicine and the Texas A&M University College of Medicine Houston campus. He's a clinical professor of urology at Baylor College of Medicine. On top of all that, he's a practicing urologist. A colleague puts it more simply, Tim is a leader among leaders both in medical education and in his professional life as a urologist. Tim graduated from Southwestern with a Bachelor in Science in Biology. He went on to earn his master's degree in Physiology and a doctorate in Neuroscience at the University of Texas Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences at Houston, 
before receiving his medical degree from the University of Texas Medical School at Houston. He was a member of the faculty at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School and then Baylor College of Medicine before moving to Houston Methodist Hospital to establish a new groundbreaking urology department and residency training program. He specializes in the treatment of patients with problems associated with neurologic issues arising from spinal cord injury, stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and other diseases. In his role as Director of Education for the Houston Methodist Institute for Academic Medicine, Tim oversees all education programs for the hospital system, including graduate and undergraduate programs. An enormous responsibility, not just for today's doctors, but for tomorrow's. Tim is an advocate for all the core principles and values that drive Houston Methodist's mission and beliefs, which run parallel to those of Southwestern. Reverend Charles Milken, class of 1968, and Vice President for Spiritual Care and Values Integration at Houston Methodist says, Dr. Boone is ensuring our future success by instilling these same beliefs and values into our medical residents who are eternally imprinted both by his personality and his passion for the care of patients as they progress in their future development as outstanding physicians, scientists, researchers across the globe, as well as humans. Dr. Boone served as president of the American Board of Urology from 2011 to 2012 and chaired as maintenance of certification program from 2012 to 2015. He's written more than 200 research publications, given hundreds of lectures regionally and nationally, and is an active member of several medical and professional associations. He also serves as a consultant reviewer for numerous scientific journals, including the Journal of Urology, the British Journal of Urology, and the New England Journal of Medicine. These are the most respected medical journals. Dr. Boone has earned a number of awards and honors, including the Presidential Award from the Texas Urological Society, and the Distinguished Service Award from the Society for Eurodynamics and Female Urology. I've known many physicians in my life, and the words that come to mind in thinking about Tim are balance, passion for quality, quiet confidence, humility, and a sense of justice. He is all about academic excellence and lifelong learning, and his work has taken him to the very top the pinnacle of his professional world, says Dan Schultz, class of 1972, Dr. Boone's cousin. Personally, he is as quiet and unassuming as a person can be. Tim exceeds in being true to oneself. Dr. Boone has supported Southwestern in many different capacities over the years from leading the advisory council during the first phase of the recent Foundren Jones Science Center expansion and renovation to delivering the commencement address at the 2019 graduation. He currently serves as a member of our board of visitors. He also serves as a generous mentor to Southwestern students, playing it forward, providing valuable internship and summer research opportunities at Houston Methodist Hospital. In 2019, Southwestern awarded Dr. Boone an honorary doctorate. His scholarly and medical work are exceptional, and his hospital leadership has been transformational, says Edward Berger, President Emeritus at Southwestern and President and Chief Executive Officer of St. David's Foundation. His personal ethics align brilliantly with Southwestern's core values. For his exceptional professional achievements and enduring commitment to Southwestern, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is most proud to honor Dr. Timothy Bolton Boone with the Medal of Honor. It is with distinct pride that I accept the Medal of Honor Award from the Southwestern University Alumni Association. Following graduation over 40 years ago, 
With a biology degree, I pursued a career in medicine that took me to Houston for medical school, Dallas for residency at Parkland, and back to Houston for medical practice and the opportunity to teach our next generation of physicians. After several decades of driving through Georgetown in the Southwestern campus, I reconnected with Jake Shrum after a stroll through the Fondren Jones Science Building. While I felt a sense of nostalgia, a feeling of sadness fell over me, realizing the poor shape of the building, especially the laboratories. How would a world-class liberal arts university attract students and retain gifted faculty? That question and the immense generosity of donors and philanthropy led to two phases of construction and a special gift from Jack and Camille Gary to endow the School of Natural Sciences. The collective support of many dramatically changed my last stroll through the Fonder and Jones Science Building. So this Medal of Honor is dedicated to the collective effort of so many that it's disingenuous to accept it on my behalf. Rather, I accept this award on behalf of the Southwestern community writ large, dedicated to the sciences and to the teaching legacy of Bob Solon, Fred Hilgeman, and Eb Gervin. Thank you very much. Long before the COVID-19 pandemic, and resulting anxiety and social isolation turned the spotlight on the need to support children's social, emotional, and mental well-being. Molly McKee Lopez, class of 91, parent class of 21, was working to improve mental health services for Texas's youth. From the early days of her career as a research psychologist at the Texas Department of State Health Services to her current role as director of the Texas Institute for Excellence in Mental Health at the University of Texas at Austin, Steve Hicks School of Social Work, Lopez has been focused on identifying ways to better serve children with mental health challenges and their families. Molly has long been a champion for children's mental health, and her work is moving the mental health system forward in ways that will have long-lasting positive effects for children, their families, and the communities they live in, says Stacy stevens manser Associate Director of the Texas Institute for Excellence in Mental Health. For over 20 years, she's been working to develop and implement mental health systems of care to improve children and family resilience and mental health, and has conducted research on mental health best practices within those systems of care. After graduating summa cum laude from Southwestern with her bachelor's degree in psychology, Lopez went on to earn her master's degree and doctorate in clinical psychology from Texas A&M University. She served in several leadership roles within the Texas Department of State Health Services, where she provided policy and programmatic oversight of children's mental health services and played a key role in a system redesign aimed at ensuring that evidence-based treatments were widely available and supported by state infrastructure. Molly is dedicated, caring, brilliant, and humble, says her husband, John Lopez, class of 89, parent class of 21. From the time we were students, Molly was very dedicated to whatever she was doing. She was one of those students who always did the reading before class and who rewrote and outlined her notes after class. She managed to go from kindergarten to a PhD with only one B, and she will still argue that she got robbed on that one. In addition to serving as the director of the Texas Institute for Excellence in Mental Health, which she created in 2012, Lopez is a licensed clinical psychologist and research associate professor. She has been published in several peer-reviewed academic journals, presented at dozens of professional conferences, and served as the principal investigator on multiple grants funded by the National Institute of Mental Health the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, and other organizations. In 2017, she received the Stella Churchill Mullins Champion for Children's Mental Health Award. Molly inspires our team to never lose sight of the people our work serves and the importance of this work in supporting others to meet their personal goals for lifelong success, Manser says. Lopez and her husband have been annual contributors to Southwestern for more than 20 years. The couple's daughter, Emma Lopez, class of 21, is double majoring in political science and Latin American and border studies at Southwestern. Lopez also has served as a guest lecturer for the psychology departments. 
Molly is a fantastic leader and is committed to helping to grow and develop other leaders, says Tracy A. Levins, who worked with Lopez at the Texas Department of State Health Services. It's one thing to be brilliant, which she is, and kind, which she is, and engaging and warm and creative and all of the other wonderful qualities she exhibits on a daily basis. But to be humble too, that's something special. That's Molly. For her outstanding contributions to children's mental health services and dedication to Southwestern's core values, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor Molly McKee Lopez with the Distinguished Professional Award. Good evening. I wanted to express how truly honored I am by this amazing award. I feel blessed to be able to work in the field of mental health, and I know that my experience at Southwestern really set the stage for my career, so that makes this all the more special. When I left Southwestern and went on to graduate school in clinical psychology, I was planning to be a therapist. I had learned from Dr. Hooker the importance of relationship, of connection, and finding meaning in life. And I wanted to use these lessons to make a difference in the lives of children and families. But as it does, my career took a different path when I moved to Austin after getting my degree and John began law school. I found a position at the state's mental health agency and found that I could support children with mental health challenges in a really different way. It was in this new role that I learned how some of the other things I learned from Southwestern would help me on my path. Uh, in this role, I learned about how much I loved research and evaluation, which was uh, really fostered by lessons from Dr. Purdy, who challenged his students to explore those things that could be proven, uh, the things that we could learn through the scientific method. And while at the state agency, I also learned that people can make a significant impact by changing systems, by focusing on making sure that agencies and the people that work for them are able to provide the service and supports that really make a difference to families. I think about the time spent in discussions with Dr. Reiner, when he would challenge us to think critically about the mental health industry and really question both the benefits and harms that it can cause. It wasn't always comfortable because he was really having us question the very field we wanted to work in, but it helped me learn to question the status quo and to ask how we can do better. And I've really used this a lot in my work. Since my time at Southwestern, I've been blessed with wonderful mentors who have taught me and supported me throughout my career. And I feel so lucky to have many of them as colleagues and friends today. I also have to thank my family, another part of my life that really began at Southwestern where I met my husband, John. John and my three children, Haley, Emma, and Jacob are my rocks. Emma will be graduating from Southwestern in May this year, and I look forward to seeing where the lessons that she learned here will take her. So thank you again for this wonderful honor. In an era where it is hard to go a day without hearing the term fake news, it can be challenging to work in politics or communications, much less political communications. For Jason Embry, class of 98, the challenge is part of the reward. Embry, who began his career in journalism before serving as communications director for a high-ranking politician and later co-founding a public relations firm, understands that words have power, and he uses his power to speak truth. In today's political and news environments, it can be difficult to know what is true and what is not. A lot of noise exists that isn't always based on facts, says Christy Rome, executive director of the Texas School Coalition, who met Embry when he was a reporter with the Austin American Statesman. In Jason's professional capacity, he works to ensure that the truth is spoken, not just someone's selective version and interpretation of facts and events. Embry began his professional career in journalism while at Southwestern, covering high school, soccer, and baseball for the Williamson County Sun. After graduating with a double major in communication and political science, he worked briefly for two small newspapers before joining the Statesman. He began covering Texas politics, eventually moving to Washington, D.C. to become the newspaper's Washington correspondent. When the Statesman closed the Washington Bureau in 2008, Embry returned to Austin and became chief political correspondent. He also launched a blog called First Reading, an early morning rundown of the day ahead in Texas politics and government. 
The blog was named the best blog in Texas in 2011 by the Associated Press Managing Editors Association. First reading helped Embry find his voice in Texas politics, and people were listening. When Joe Strauss, then Speaker of the Texas House of Representatives, offered him a position in his office, Embry accepted. He served as the Speaker's Communications Director, developing and implementing communication strategies and serving as a spokesman for and speechwriter. There were many times that Jason contributed to the public policy through communication, Strauss says. He made an impact on public education, social health care services, higher education, and criminal justice. He was a considerable influence in policy debate in Texas for years. When Strauss left office in 2018, Embry took the opportunity to start afresh. He and former statesman colleague Steve Skybel launched a new West Communication, a full-service strategic communications firm. The firm's clients have included major players in education, healthcare, and renewable energy policy, as well as the Austin Chamber of Commerce, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, and Eric Johnson's successful 2019 campaign for mayor of Dallas. Jason loves to work for people he believes in, generally those who help others at an immediate, often tangible level. And he works very hard and very effectively for them, says Skybull. Every cause, especially something like education that breathes humanity into society, is stronger when Jason is on the team. Channing Burke Weiss, class of 88, who worked with Embry at the speaker's office, concurs. For me, he exemplifies professionalism, coupled with an ability to call it like he sees it. He's honest, hardworking, really, truly funny, a great dad and husband, and a devoted son, Weiss says. Jason was a Padilla student before we created Padilla, says Tim O'Neill, professor emeritus of political science at Southwestern. He weaved his interests in po politics and media into a career that continues to evolve, connecting what is in the textbooks with what is happening in the world. We hope our alums go on to make the world a better place and how they, then how they found it. Jason makes us all the better as he leads us to a more informed, non-judgmental picture of public affairs. For his ongoing professional success and embodiment of Southwestern's core value, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor Jason Embry with a Distinguished Professional Award. Hi, I'm Jason Embry, and I am profoundly honored to receive the Distinguished Professional Award. I want to thank Southwestern for this award. And I want to thank my family, especially my wife, Amanda, and our sons, Miles and Graham, and my parents who worked so hard so that I could have the opportunity to attend Southwestern in the first place. We talk a lot about how Southwestern is a place that helps us become well-rounded people who are caring and thoughtful and ready to contribute to our communities and contribute to the broader world around us. And it certainly is. And because Southwestern helps us become that type of person, it's also a place that prepares us for professional success and any professional endeavor that we may choose. In fact, I found that a lot of the people that I have learned the most from in my career are people who have liberal arts backgrounds. Right now, I own a small business with an English major from the University of Texas and, an, and a history major from the University of Pennsylvania. And in the fields that I've had the opportunity to work in, from media to politics to public affairs, we need more people who have the critical thinking and the analytical approach that Southwestern helps all of us develop. People who are ready to come with big solutions and important ideas on, on challenges such as racial injustice or climate change or misinformation, inequality, all these types of major challenges that face us right now and are going to factor into our future. And so I hope to see more Southwestern graduates come into these fields uh, because I have no doubt that they will make a tremendous difference. And, and so I just wanna say again that I'm grateful for the opportunity to have received a Southwestern education and I am profoundly honored to have received this award. Thank you very much.
Hi, I'm Sherry Babcock, class of 1970 and member of the Alumni Council. I worship with Ginger Games Sorelli when I'm in Washington, D.C., and had the privilege of uh, being with her for a week here at Chautauqua. So I'm very honored to read her citation for Distinguished Professional. As the senior pastor of a historic church located just a mile from the White House, Ginger E. Gaines Sorelli, 92, knew her congregation would be deeply impacted by the 2016 presidential election. Foundry United Methodist Church had a rich tradition of social justice activism, and many members were worried about the possibility of divisive politics. Gaines Sorelli began exploring the role of the church in fighting injustice in divisive and troubling times. Within months, she had helped found Sanctuary DMV, an organization that works to protect immigrants and marginalized communities in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, the DMV area, and established a sacred resistance ministry team at Foundry. She also wrote a book, Sacred Resistance, a practical guide to Christian witness and dissent that was published in 2018. Hillary Clinton herself praised the book, writing that it was a timely, important look for anyone searching for hope, strength, and meaning in troubled times. In her tenure as senior pastor of Foundry UMC, Ginger has led the congregation to be active in critical justice issues of our day. Whether it relates to Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ equality, immigration reform, homelessness, or any number of other issues, Ginger shows up to speak truth and remind us of our moral obligations to the human family, says Amy P. McCullough, lead pastor at Grace United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Don M. Hand, former executive pastor and chief of staff at Foundry, recalls gathering on Capitol Hill with Gaines Sorelli and church members to advocate for LGBTQ rights. Members of the media interviewed Ginger. She offered statements lifting up LGBTQ plus persons as individuals, couples, and families of sacred worth. She spoke about the church's call to be in ministry with all God's people. She shared about the humanity of LGBTQ plus folk having the same rights, the same opportunities, and the same access to liberties afforded to all people, she says. This is honoring the well-being of humanity. This is what Ginger does so passionately. A religious studies major at Southwestern, Gaines Sorelli received her Master of Divinity from Yale University. After serving other congregations in the D.C. area, she was named Foundry's first female senior pastor in the church's 200-year history in 2014. She serves on the Board of Ordained Ministry for the Baltimore-Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church, which unites more than 600 churches in the region, and was editor of the CEB Women's Bible. In 2018, Gaines Sorelli received a Washington Women of Excellence Award from Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. Ginger embodies the very best of what Southwestern represents, says Farley Snell, former Southwestern chaplain and professor emeritus of religion and philosophy. She is a recognized national leader and part of a network of progressive clergy working for inclusiveness and social justice. By the way, she was the brightest student I ever worked with in my 27 years teaching at Southwestern. Each time I have visited Ginger and met her friends, colleagues, and members of her congregation, they all tell me how much they value her and the work she does, says JoLynn Rippond, Gaines Sorelli's sister. She means something to each of them for their own reasons, but nonetheless, they see her as a shining light in their world. Perhaps I could summarize my perception of her impact on others and her community by borrowing words from the Wizard of Oz. 
heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. For her devotion, her achievements, and above all else, her heart. The Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor Ginger E. Gaines Sorelli with the Distinguished Professional Award. Hello. I want to begin and end these brief remarks with these words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to everyone who has had a part in extending to me this truly meaningful honor. Thank you to the professors who taught me so well, who pushed me and believed in me. And thank you to all of my friends who made the Southwestern experience so memorable and such a powerful part of my formation. I suppose it can be said for anyone that you don't really know where life will take you. The truth is I arrived at Southwestern unsure of any of it, what I would major in, what I would really, where I would really find my passion and where life would take me after was not even anywhere in my mind. I'm not a big one to plan way ahead, or at least I wasn't at that time. And I'm so grateful for the space and the support that I received at Southwestern to explore so many different options, to study deeply in a variety of disciplines, and ultimately to find the thing that made my heart sing when I landed in the Department of Religion and Philosophy. I knew that I was home, and I want to especially say thank you to Farley Snell for identifying and the, that passion and encouraging that study and encouraging me to, to go on and to do graduate work, which has ultimately led me to where I am today, and I'm so grateful. So again, thank you. Thank you for um, this honor. Thank you for all of you who've been part of my journey. And thank you to those who continue to make Southwestern a place where people can find what makes their hearts sing and live into the fullness of their passion to serve the world because <laughs> our world needs folks, as Howard Thurman once said, who have come alive, who have found the thing that makes them come alive. So thank you for, for serving your students in that way. Thank you. It's easy to recognize George Cruz Jr., class of 95, at a Southwestern home football game. A season ticket holder, since football was reinstated in 2013, Cruz can be found decked out in black and gold spirit wear under his custom printed Southwestern tailgating tent. He will be manning the grill and surrounded by friends and fellow alumni. But even if you somehow miss him, there is no need to worry. The second he catches your eye, he will recognize you. For years, long before Facebook, I called George a human Facebook, says David Leggett, class of 97. Every person he met became an immediate friend. And after his first meeting with you, he would remember everything you shared with him, from your children's names and birthdays to your favorite color and high school mascot. George has an uncanny ability to remember your shared experiences while making you feel like the only person in the room. A graduate of Cistercian Preparatory School in Irving, Cruz enrolled at Southwestern after being heavily recruited by former admissions staff member, John Lind, who said, I initially met George at Cistercian when he was in his senior year. As we worked together, George became one of the students I was convinced belonged at Southwestern. I thought he would thrive at Southwestern and find that his choice would define the rest of his life. It sounds like it has. The first member of his family to attend college, Cruz was a devoted Southwestern pirate the minute he arrived in Georgetown. The Spanish and biology double major quickly became immersed in the campus experience, becoming an active member of Pi Kappa Alpha, Alpha Phi Omega, Latinos Unidos, Student Government, the Academic Affairs Council, Students Helping the Admissions and Recruitment Process, SHARP, and the Interfraternity Council. 
As a resident advisor at Reuter Hall, he encouraged first-year students to fully embrace university life as well. Cruz, who manages a private oral surgery practice in Dallas, has been a class agent for the past 25 years. He serves on the board of the Dallas chapter of the Southwestern University Alumni Association and is a past member of the Alumni Council. As a recruitment volunteer, George represents Southwestern at college fairs and speaks with prospective students about the benefits of attending Southwestern. He regularly coordinates happy hours and other local alumni events and cheers on the Pirates athletic teams whenever they come to town. He's especially proud of his role in establishing the Class of 1995 Endowed Scholarship at Southwestern. Cruz returns to campus regularly and attends homecoming every year. Walking across campus with George is like strolling down a small town main street with a beloved mayor. He knows absolutely everyone and stops to chat with them all, says Eric Tim, class of 93. At homecoming, I'm always struck by the number of colored ribbons that have been affixed to his name tag. Class agent, Brown Society, alumni officer. He's like a five-star general. Cruz's generosity with his time extends beyond his support of Southwestern. He is a member of the Cistercian Preparatory School Alumni Association Board of Directors, and each summer he volunteers as a counselor at Camp Moss, a week-long camp for children with cardiac disease. George has a heart that is bigger than anyone I know, never putting himself first, but often putting Southwestern and his wide network of alumni friends ahead of himself, says Craig McKinney, 91. He has committed time, energy, money, talent, emotion, and intelligence into service to Southwestern, and the wider alumni community is better and stronger because of his influence. For his ongoing enthusiasm and decades of devoted service to Southwestern, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor George Cruz Jr. with the Distinguished Southwestern Service Award. So many persons to thank at Southwestern, everyone in the admissions office, the financial aid office, the registrar's office, the alumni relations office, the commons for getting me into Southwestern, keeping me at Southwestern, and uh, really George Ann and Megan for working with us over the past 25, almost 30 years, hard to believe. In particular, I want to uh, mention the late Mr. John Lind. It was Mr. Lind who uh, really convinced me that Southwestern was a place for me, and uh, he was right. Uh, my fellow students, everyone who's been a class officer, class agent, or a reunion committee member over the past several years, decades, funny, uh, Laura, Amy, Brian, Lee, Amanda, Daniel, Leanne, Sarah, Molly, so many others, thank you. I share this with you, and uh, your passion for Southwestern is an inspiration to me. Um, I am so proud of the fact that we created the Class of 1995 Endowed Scholarship that benefits students to this day. All my Pi Kappa Alpha brothers, so many of you to name, so many wonderful memories. Um, I must thank in particular David Leggett for spearheading this nomination. Uh, it's an honor. Thank you for this, David. Uh, other fellow alumni, um, first and foremost, Maxie Harden. Maxie's friendship has, continues to be a blessing to me to this day. And um, she is not just a friend, she's my family. Uh, I would like to thank the entire Southwestern community for wholeheartedly embracing my partner, Carrie Hemel. Carrie and I met 10 years ago and I quickly introduced him to Southwestern and vice versa. Uh, Carrie, I love you. Thank you for indulging my passion for Southwestern, all the road trips to Georgetown, all the busy homecoming schedules and uh, football games in the 100 degree plus heat. Uh, thank you. Uh, to my parents, George and Gloria. George, who grew up not far from here in Rosebud, Texas, um, and my mother who grew up in Mexico in a little tiny village called La Yerbabuena in Silao, Guanajuato, Mexico. Um, their journeys are just remarkable um, and I cannot thank them enough. I know I'm very fortunate to have both of them um, living near me, um, both healthy and happy. Um, my father is almost 92, so it's just been another blessing. I'm sure I've surpassed my two minute limit, but to sum up how I feel about this award, about Southwestern, and everyone I need to thank, well, it's just not enough time, but hopefully I'll see you at homecoming or before. Thank you.
biggest benefits of a Southwestern education is the opportunity to get to know faculty one-on-one. -on -one. Many students develop long-lasting relationships with their professors and stay in touch long after they have graduated. Some even offer to come back to Georgetown to guest lecture or talk about their careers with current students. Travis Bias, class of 04, took things one step further when he told Professor of Biology Maria Cuevas that he would be happy to speak to her class in 2016. Cuevas was teaching in London at the time as part of Southwestern's London program. Travis put together a panel of doctors and visited my class where we discussed the differences between healthcare systems in the United States and the United Kingdom, Cuevas says. It was phenomenal. This is the generous and kind person that Travis is. To be fair, Travis was already planning to be in London when he made his thoughtful offer because he was in the middle of an international teaching opportunity like no other. He taught for over a year in East Africa, first for four months at Kabarak University in Kenya, and then for eight months at the Bootsi Tema University in Uganda through the Global Health Service Partnership, a collaboration between the Peace Corps, the U.S. President Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, and SEED Global Health. These experiences in these low-income areas cemented Bias's goal to drive system-level change toward health and equity through policy. Esther M. Johnson, Director of Medicine at Seed Global Health, met Bias when she was interviewing him for the Global Health Service Partnership position. Though he is a very strong clinician and educator, one of the things that made him so unique was his understanding of the complex interplay between government, society, health, and the need to think more distally, more upstream, to truly create positive systemic change. He worked with his colleagues at the university, not just to provide high quality cl clinical education, but also to elevate conversations about leadership and good governance, Johnston says. A biology major and political science minor at Southwestern, Bias served as social chair of Pi Kappa Alpha, was a member of the University Committee on Discipline, and played on the men's tennis team, earning all conference honors his senior year. He received his DO from the University of North Texas Health Science Center, Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, and his MPH from the Georgetown Washington University. He also earned his diploma in tropical medicine and hygiene from the London School of Metro Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Today, Bias is a family medicine physician in Oakland, California, and a clinical transformation consultant at 3M. He has lectured at the George Washington University Milken Institute of Public Health and the University of California Berkeley School of Public Health and written articles for several publications. He also maintains a personal blog. He volunteers as a member of the Human Rights Watch's San Francisco Committee and as an advisor to Bulamu Healthcare, which provides medical care to rural families in Uganda. Travis has this drive to always do more, to be better and to stay engaged, says his partner, Ashley Ramirez. At times, he reminds me of the Energizer Bunny that just keeps going and going and going especially after his double shot of cappuccino. Travis is a fully engaged citizen in an interconnected world that is constantly learning and growing and always focused on how he can contribute and help improve the lives of other humans on this planet. Fellow classmate of 2004, Christopher Morgan says, Travis has truly exemplified what it means to be a humanitarian and represented Southwestern well throughout the world. So for his contributions to global health and the well-being of humanity, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor Travis Bias with the Distinguished Humanitarian Award. Thank you so much to the Southwestern University Alumni Association. It's an honor to receive this award. This is honestly a reflection of my upbringing and of my time at Southwestern, a community at a pivotal time in my life that encouraged service, instilled in me the importance of understanding and appreciating the societal context in which I studied or worked, and set me on a path on which I've sought out opportunities where my strengths and interests meet a need. Cemented over a year in Kenya and then Uganda, I gradually arrived at a couple key realizations. First, that I needed to continue to create combined professional and personal stations in life where I could maximize my training in medicine and public health in order to devote my time and resources to affect health policies and efforts to protect human rights. Second, that service can take many forms in direct patient care, or in advocacy for populations, in Oakland, California, or in Mbali, Uganda, in healthcare, or in education. There are plenty of unmet needs in every community, especially during this global pandemic, and all of our contributions are needed now more than ever. 
A guest lecturer during one of my public health courses once said that his current job with PEPFAR, or the U.S. Presidency Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, didn't even exist 30 years ago. And that reassured me that my dream job may not exist today. So in the meantime, I've simply tried to put good opportunities in my path that created a chance to learn and grow, energized me, and served a need. One of those opportunities was an eight-month stint with the U.S. Peace Corps, which is actually how I met my partner, Ashley. So you never know how your path may turn out when you're doing what you're truly meant to do. My time at SU empowered me to take a broader view of what my life and career path might look like and to take risks to get where I am now. Thank you again to the Southwestern University Alumni Association for this awesome recognition. Starting a new business is a complicated process. It requires ambition, time, and money, not to mention legal expertise. That's where Jessica Victorio, class of 2011, comes in. Victorio's Dallas-based law firm, which she established in 2015, focuses on providing startups and small business owners with the insight and advice they need to grow their business. To date, Victorio has served more than 1,000 businesses and handled over $200 million in transactions. One thing that never ceases to amaze me about Jessica is her phenomenal professionalism, says Graham, who met Victorio at the Dallas Startup Week. The stress in this line of work is real, and maintaining composure is difficult. Jessica is the kind of person who is always liable to overcommit, but nevertheless follows through on every commitment. That mindset is fundamental to the community that she hopes to serve. And it makes her a great attorney, especially for the little guy. The daughter of two successful entrepreneurs, Victoria decided that she was going to be a lawyer when she was in middle school. She majored in political science at Southwestern, where she was involved in a number of organizations, including Student Congress, Student Foundation, Delta Delta Delta, the Pre-Law Society, and the Student Affair Council. After receiving her JD from Baylor Law School, Victoria worked as a law clerk at the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and as a legislative counsel in the office of U.S. Representative Brian Babin in Washington, D.C., before launching her firm. Victoria has spoken at over 500 events, including Dallas Startup Week and Austin Startup Week, and was named a finalist for Dallas Startup Week's Startup Evangelist of the Year Award in 2019. She is also an adjunct professor at Collins College in Frisco, Texas, and has guest lectured at the University of Texas at Dallas, the University of Texas at Arlington, and the University of North Texas. But she is more than a business attorney and educator. She is also a community advocate and volunteer. She has provided legal assistance to nonprofit organizations that address is issues ranging from homelessness to mental health. In 2019, she served as a member of the American Bar Association delegation that provided pro bono legal counsel to detained immigrants seeking asylum at the South Texas border, an eye-opening experience that she shared in a TED Talk in Frisco, Texas. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she stepped in to assist and represent people that were at risk of being illegally evicted from their homes. Victoria is also an active member of First United Methodist Church in Dallas, where she has served as a lay leader on multiple committees and commissions. She was elected as one of four lay delegates from the North Texas Conference to General Conference in 2020, the global gathering and legislative arm of the United Methodist Church. Victoria remains a proud supporter of Southwestern, She's a past president of the Dallas chapter of Southwestern University Alumni Association and co-founder of Pirates Who Tech, which connects alumni in the technology and entrepreneurial communities. Jessica is a prime example of a Southwestern graduate. We can all be proud to share an alma mater with, says Amy Crook, class of 2011. She exemplifies our core values and promotes a passion for intellectual and personal growth fostering diverse perspective and encouraging activism in the pursuit of justice and the common good. She lives by the daily motto that we hold so dearly, 
not who, but what. For her generous spirit and outstanding con contribution to the legal field, the Southwestern Alumni Association is proud to honor Jessica Victorio with the Distinguished Young Alumna Award. Congratulations, Jessica. In 2011, I sat in the chapel at Southwestern for graduation and listened to the speaker tell us about all of the amazing things that we were going to accomplish. I was a month away from law school and not even legally old enough to drink, and I dreamed of a prestigious law career and influencing the world in some grand way. Since my time at Southwestern, I have had so many unique opportunities that I never could have anticipated in that moment, but I've also learned a lot of things that I couldn't have anticipated. I've learned that wanting to rock the institution is a great thing, but being yourself in a profession that often wants you to be a conservative older white male is not without its frustrations and barriers. I've learned that speaking truth to power sounds lovely and graceful in speeches, but in reality, it looks a lot like approaching podiums with trembling hands and pushing through panic attacks in front of a room full of people that really do not want to hear what you have to say. I've learned that sometimes seeking justice and seeking popularity are mutually exclusive and that while seeking popularity feels very attractive, it oftentimes feels hollow and lonely. I've learned that the most effective advocacy requires humility and vulnerability and a constant willingness to accept and examine your own flaws and failures. And I've learned that influencing the world in some grand way is great, but it's the mark that you leave on your own community that will incrementally make the world a better place. There are a million things that I've learned since my time in the chapel that day, but without the values that I gained through my experience at Southwestern without that humanity, without that confidence in my own identity or my respect for differing views and opinions, all of those experiences that followed would have been completely lost on me. I am without a doubt a more accomplished professional because of the skills that I learned at Southwestern, but more importantly, I'm a better neighbor, a better friend, and a better daughter. Thank you so much for this honor and congratulations to the other recipients and honorees. Nicholas R. Cox, class of 2011, may have been recruited to play baseball at Southwestern, but he has ended up being an all-star in an entirely different field, dentistry. Dr. Nicholas Cox exemplifies dedication, commitment, and execution of excellence in the field of dentistry, says Christopher Lowry, class of 2011. He serves patients from all walks of life, providing each with quality treatment and honest advice. His comforting, candid chairside manner, technical proficiency, and commitment to his work has established him as one of the most successful young dentists in North Dallas, if not the state of Texas. At Southwestern, Cox was a relief pitcher for the Pirates baseball team for four years, earning academic All-American honors twice and served on the executive committee of the Phi Delta Theta fraternity. After graduating with a BS in chemistry, he went on to earn his DDS from the University of Texas Health Science Center, San Antonio where he received the International Congress of Implantologists Pre-Doctoral Achievement Award and the Comprehensive Dentistry Award, which is presented to the graduating senior who best demonstrates outstanding patient care, superior clinical skills, and excellent clinical productivity. He also served as president of UTHSCSA's chapter of the Xi Psi Phi International Dental Fraternity. As a member of the Christian Medical and Dental Association from 2011 to 2015, Cox provided free dental care while participating in several mission trips in underprivileged areas in Texas. In 2017, the North Texas Dental Society named him New Dentist of the Year. Dr. Cox currently owns Cox Family Dentistry in Plano, which he acquired in 2016. He is known for taking a personal interest in his patients and calling them himself to see how they are feeling following a procedure rather than asking the office staff to do it. He pays attention to the patient's concerns, the hygienist's concerns, all the way to the front office staff's concerns, says Alan Lowry, class of 2011. These all give him the required information so he can continue his lifelong learning on how to better serve his patients and ultimately his community. Shortly after launching his career, Cox began to explore ways to give back to Southwestern and support students interested in dental careers. Ultimately, he worked with the Center for Career and Professional Development 
to establish a summer shadowing program designed to help students obtain meaningful clinical experiences and learn about the, the, both the demands and the rewards of being a dentist. He noticed a need when he was in school for resources that specifically help students wanting to attend dental school after graduation, explains his wife, Allie Cox. The internship program that he has started has been helpful in exposing students to experiences in the dental office they likely wouldn't get otherwise. He very much enjoys getting to mentor and guide students to discovering the ins and outs of private practice dentistry. I cannot think of a more deserving young professional than Nick, says Carrie Bruns, Professor Emeritus of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Southwestern. In the many years of teaching and advising students, Nick stands out as one of the few excellent students who have made a genuine effort to give back to the university and to help another student make a choice of careers. He has done this in a way that was not to glorify him in any way, but just out of the human goodness that is at his center. Lowry concurs, Nick exemplifies the success that a liberal arts philosophy can build in a person and in a community, he says. For his gener generous spirit and dedication to his field, the Southwestern University Alumni Association is proud to honor Dr. Nicholas R. Cox with the Distinguished Young Alumnus Award. Congratulations, Dr. Cox. Hi. I'm Dr. Nicholas Cox, and I am beyond honored to accept the Distinguished Young Alumnus Award. Um, and I'd like to thank the Southwestern University Alumni Council for honoring me and, and my wife for the work that we've done. Uh, we're, we're just so grateful for all the opportunities that uh, my Southwestern education has given us. Um, our family has been, has been blessed to do our best to serve our community um, and spread the Southwestern way, the Be Southwestern, um, in, in how we give to others, how we use our education, and how we do that uh, to further our community. Um, I am very grateful for the education, the networking, the friends, um, and the lifelong relationships that I made while I was at Southwestern, and I think all of those have contributed to the, um, the efforts that we've been able to make at Southwestern. Uh, and although our, our reach and how we've uh, been able to help some of the young people there has been um, precise, it's also been very profound. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to continuing that adventure uh, over the next uh, few years and decades and working with Southwestern. Um, and again, uh, thank you to the uh, Southwestern community for this um, this honor. Thank you for attending tonight's Distinguished Alumni Awards presentation. Congratulations to this year's recipients, and I hope to see you all on campus this year.